So good afternoon, friends, and uh, welcome back to the online learning platform at Department of Civil Engineering. So Rajesh Kopinath here, and uh, we are for the course Environmental Studies. In the last session, you know, we had discussed about ecosystem. We were having a fair knowledge of the various classifications such as aquatic, terrestrial, special, and further with respect to each of these ecosystems, we were trying to understand about the structure and function. So in today's class, okay, we will be discussing about biodiversity. Okay, what are its different types? What is its significance? What is biodiversity hotspots? What are the threats for biodiversity and how I and you can go about conserving it? So finally, towards the end, I shall summarize the presentation before listing the references for you. To set the pulse for today's presentation, we'll have a glimpse of a small video, okay? Probably something no other planet can offer is what you see, our planet. I and you step in and spoil it. Honestly speaking, you know, we are responsible directly and indirectly for all that you see on your screen. she's hurting the actual fact is it's we who are going to be hurt
is this the earth you want to see you want your generation the next generation to see your future to see so friends i believe that you know this uh, video has set the pulse uh, you know for what exactly i'm going to speak about today so you no know, whenever we speak about biodiversity basically we are talking about richness vast richness of diversification of species species living in a particular area as simple as that and whenever we are referring to hot spots i am talking about high richness high richness of species high species endemicness but unfortunately now hot spots the focus has shifted not just from the richness or endemism now it has shifted to the threats they are facing the destruction they are facing the extinction they are facing so to start off today's presentation let's try to understand what exactly is biodiversity okay in simple words if you have a variety of organisms variety of species who are inhabiting a particular specialized location then you call it as biodiversity where you find more number of variety of species than any other part of the earth okay now what is this diversity you are referring to there are three levels of diversity genetic diversity species diversity ecosystem diversity i'll be explaining i'll be providing a glimpse of each one of these in the further slides then further we need to understand why are we referring why are we actually thinking about diversity in the previous session we had understood about importance of you know ecosystem we spoke about the functions we spoke about the regulatory function information function productive function habitat function in simple words we understood the services which is provided by the earth to us the economical services ecological services now if you go about destroying your environment we are destroying the services they offer to us so we need to conserve them so today we'll also understand the two ways in which you can conserve the diversity in situ ex situ so let's try to understand with genetic diversity now basically we all know the word genes okay now genes are the basic units of your hereditary information now genes are found in me genes are found in you so these genes which are found in organisms they actually form enormous combinations okay and this enormous combination is resulting in genetic variability okay in simple words if you ask me genetic biodiversity refers to the variation of genes within a species for example look at the image mangoes the varieties of mangoes okay the, whether it's alfonza or totapuri or sinduri okay whatever they are so basically are talking about diversity within a species so my dear friends this is genetic diversity and why is genetic diversity important for you because if you have genetic diversity then we have the potential to combat pollution to combat adaptation which is necessary for changing environments we can combat diseases okay now another example to show you what is genetic diversity we are all aware of the feline species okay whether it's your tiger whether it's your wild cat your snow leopard so there are so many varieties of feline species okay this is referred to as genetic diversity so if i can speak about wild cat if i can speak about domestic cat if i can speak about you know the panther the leopard and tiger i can go one level down that is sub species so you can find out genetic diversity within the species itself for example your tiger okay now you can have varieties such as your sumatran tiger your snow tiger okay you can have your royal bengal tiger you can have your south china tiger as you see here so my dear friends what exactly is genetic diversity among all the three types of diversity genetic diversity is the smallest level of diversity the level of diversity which is found within a species okay and let's be very honest if leopards are on the brink of extinction its key reason is connected to genetic diversity so with this information about genetic diversity okay let's move on to the next largest level of diversity and that is species diversity 
okay in simple words if you want to know what is species diversity it is nothing but the variety of species which is living within a given area okay and species diversity is very important because it is directly connected with your food chain with your food web with your prey predator relationship so species diversity is essential for maintaining the ecosystem balance while genetic diversity speaks about the survival of those species species diversity refers to the survival the maintenance of the ecosystem itself so if a place is very rich in species diversity then you are actually looking at variety of species variability of species you are basically talking about biological wealth okay moving on from genetic diversity to species diversity now let's talk about ecosystem diversity genetic diversity was the smallest level species diversity was the next largest level but friends ecosystem diversity is the broadest the largest diversity level okay because when you are talking about ecosystem diversity you are talking about the complexities in ecological world you are talking about variety of ecosystems existing together so in simple words it is coexistence of varieties of habitats just have a look at this image now to have little clarity on what i'm trying to speak okay you see a reptile okay probably you're looking at a crocodile you're looking at birds so this is species diversity but you see grassland you see an aquatic ecosystem okay further you also may see trees so this is ecosystem diversity that is the diversity at the habitat level okay now if you pin me to the wall and ask me the difference between species diversity and ecosystem diversity i would rather say like this the major difference between species diversity and ecosystem diversity is that species diversity is the variety of species in a particular region i'll repeat this species diversity is the variety of species within a particular region but ecosystem diversity is the variety of ecosystems in a particular area so that is how i would rather sum it up for you okay so my dear friends now that you have understood what is biodiversity you have understood the three levels genetic species and ecosystem now let's try to focus upon where we find these in abundance or probably at the risk of loss let's try to understand the concept of biodiversity hotspots okay now before i start this let's have a look at a small video okay here's another edition of animal planet news they cover just a tiny portion of the planet only 2% of all our land but they're home to more than half the plant and animal species on Earth. They're called biodiversity hotspots because they're in grave danger. Now conservationists are coming to the rescue. They've mapped out 17 of these so-called hotspots, each home to plant and animal life that's found nowhere else. If any one of them disappears, thousands of species will be lost forever. They're the areas that deserve bonus points, very special attention in any efforts to conserve biodiversity worldwide. All of the hotspots have under 25% of original natural vegetation remaining. In some cases, only 1% to 5% of original habitat remains. Most of the hotspots are in the tropics, and most are rainforests. They're disappearing because of destruction by humans, including unsustainable logging, the burning of jungle areas to create farmland, and uncontrolled development. Some hotspots stand out as top priorities, like the island of Madagascar home of the remaining 50 species of lemurs. Conservationists are working to see that all the biodiversity hotspots are protected to ensure that this planet's rich and diverse natural wealth is carried safely into the next century. There is a tendency to descend into gloom and doom. But what we have with the threatened hotspots approach is a way of making this biodiversity crisis that much more manageable. And that is why we are recommending that these threatened hotspots receive maximum international attention in the years to come. Conservationists are working to see that all the biodiversity hotspots are protected 
to ensure that this planet's rich and diverse natural wealth is carried safely into the next century. And that's Animal Planet News. So friends, in simple words, you know, when we speak about biodiversity hotspots, we are talking about those locations, okay, those regions, and, uh, you know, something probably at the global scale or the national scale or the regional scale, but these are those locations, these are those terrains, these are those territories where you have so much of diversity existing. Also, you have a particular species found only in that area. So what is going to happen when that area is destroyed, when that region is destroyed, whether it could be for urbanization or industrialization, whatever the reason may be. But if that habitat is disrupted, you're not just losing a habitat, but you're also losing a particular species which was found only in that area. And when you lose a particular species, what are you losing? You're losing a function, a critical integral function of that species to this earth. So my dear friends, as I told you, biodiversity hotspots can be at three levels. As you're looking at here on the global scale, your national scale and your local scale. Basically, there are 34 biodiversity hotspots in this world, 34. OK, and it's up to me and you to protect them now. Within India itself, we have two biodiversity hotspots. One is your Eastern Himalayas, okay? This portion, as you see, and the other is your Western Ghats. Now, we need to understand that, you know, when you speak about the biodiversity hotspots, in 1992, okay, that was your United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, okay? This happened at Rio de Janeiro, okay? And it's basically famously called as the Convention on Biological Diversity, a historic landmark. Okay, I would rather call it historic landmark because, you know, this convention had multiple objectives. Objectives such as conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of the resources. Because if we fail to protect these hotspots, it is I and you who are at risk of extinction. Not just those species, but also we will be at the risk of extinction. And you know what? Our knowledge of world's biodiversity is actually very less you know what we really think we know is very limited in fact it is nothing okay and to be precise inadequate okay yeah i would definitely agree if someone says you know we have fair knowledge about higher plants agreed but i'm positive that you know still there's a percentage which is not discovered so what is going to happen if we continue to start destroying the uh, you know vegetation the habitat you know we we may end up lo losing a lot of species that we have discovered and also a lot of species which have never been discovered okay now let's move further from your global to further information so this is basically those 34 hotspots and you know you can see we have covered all the continents all the continents have been covered except the antarctic and the arctic okay now those uh, texts what you see in red color is basically we are talking about india that is the eastern himalayas and your western ghats now this is a very simple glimpse of your global uh, biodiversity hotspots you can see how beautiful they are whether it's your amazon okay or your colorado so it's up to me and you if we are aware of the importance of these hotspots then we will go about conserving them okay but let's move further down to india we are indians okay let's try to understand something about india now though we say that you know uh, we have two biodiversity hotspots that is your uh, western guards okay uh, that is your eastern himalayas let me give you some add-on information to make you understand how important we are how significant we are how rich we are and what exactly we are doing to destroy it okay even your latest eia notification which ran into trouble for the central government is because it was all about destroying these hot spots okay did you know about 4,900 species of flowering plants are endemic to India, which means 4,900 flowering plant species can be seen only in India and no other part of this world. Okay, 
in simple words we are so rich in biodiversity that 6% of the global species is seen in our country itself unfortunately not even 6% of the population knows this information do you know that you know uh, there are you know at least 93 major wetlands coral reefs mangroves that we are yet to study and if we start studying them there is so much that we can learn about their role in protecting the environment but just because i say that you know we have western ghats and eastern himalayas doesn't mean that they are the only two hot spots see india is rich in biodiversity you know let's say you go towards gangetic plain that is your ganga or let's say you go towards uh, brahmaputra let's say you go towards our own kashmir ladakh okay andaman nicobar okay there is so much of richness available incidentally now india china standoff is actually happening at one of your hot spots okay so see look at the threat to these hot spots due to human interventions due to human activities now let me give you some information with respect to india okay now as i told you we have eastern himalayas we have you know western ghats now since we are in karnataka since we are in bangalore let me tell you the importance of western ghats itself uh, you know did you know that you know about 62% of amphibians i think you know what an amphibian is 62% of amphibians 50% of lizards okay which are found globally okay 62% and 50% respectively amphibians and lizards okay they are actually endemic to india and most of these are found in western ghats itself you know actually your eastern himalayas and uh, you know western ghats they cover less than 2% of this world's land area but it is our own eastern himalaya and western ghats which have 50% of the global terrestrial biodiversity that is how rich we are okay instantly you might have heard of you know uh, places like silent valley agastya malai okay all these your anamudi peak your jodh falls okay all these are actually part of your western ghats so why are these biodiversities important for us what is that they are contributing to us why is that we should protect that 17000 km square okay strip of forest which is running from goa maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu kerala why is that why do why is kerala facing those floods okay why is that because all of these were connected to the values of biodiversity so friends if you are able to understand the importance of biodiversity we shall be able to protect them you know why we need to protect them because uh, as per my knowledge till 1600 bc okay that is before christ every 1000 years one species was getting extinct i'll repeat this okay uh, till 1600 bc one species was always getting extinct in every 1000 years from 1600 to 1950 every 10 years we were losing one species and now my dear friends the situation is so sad every one year we are losing a species okay now let's move further and try to understand something about the values of those biodiversity what do you see you see direct values you see indirect values okay what do you see further under them okay under direct you can see consumptive and you can see protective okay which means you can quantify the value of those diversities but there is something which is intangible something which cannot be quantified for instance the ethical aspects the cultural aspects the aesthetic importance okay and of course your ecosystem services now let's look at it one by one okay ecosystem service value of biodiversity what is this in simple words if i tell you that you are getting free oxygen your air is you know kept clean pollution free by the forest okay you are having very good precipitation the temperature of the earth is always maintained okay the earth is able to handle climate change global warming so all these are actually ecosystem service values okay so for instance let us say water cycle okay combating floods uh, let us say maintenance of you know uh, the soil the fertility of soil okay 
all these are ecosystem service values your biodiversity your uh, you know the flora and fauna the biotic and abiotic factors they are so well interconnected and so well networked that they are providing you these services today in the time of covid okay there are hospitals who are running around for oxygen cylinders okay now we realize how much of oxygen is important to us which was being supplied by the trees and we are cutting it down it is so sad that the person who goes to cut a tree takes the shade with you no know, tries to take rest in the shade of that tree itself before cutting it down so how dumb or how idiotic can i and you be okay we always look for a tree to park the car yes that's a ecosystem service value but when we cut down the trees in the forest did we think about this those trees are also habitat and shelter for the wildlife okay so moving on from ecosystem let's look on to aesthetic value so obviously when you say aesthetic you connect it with tourism okay you look at the peacock feather you feel good about it you're looking at the oceanic ecosystem here you feel good about it so when i say aesthetic value something which gives you pleasantness okay probably you know you go for a trek you go for a hike okay all that is connected with aesthetic value and if you do not conserve this biodiversity these pictures will remain as pictures for your next generation next time when you go for snorkeling next time when you go for scuba diving you will only see remains okay of your consequence of your actions okay so let's move further option values so you know i am sure most of us do not know what is this okay i am positive about it okay how many of you know that this is actually wild honey okay now all we know is about honey bees we see them in and around us but how many of you are aware that honey bees are the most important species on this earth if you remove all the honey bees this entire earth is going to collapse so friends what i'm trying to you know express here is when i say option value okay i am talking about the potential of biodiversity which is still unknown okay only a tribal would have realized this my dear friend this is a photograph which was taken inside br hills inside a tiger reserve how many of us would have even realized that within a tree okay inside a tree you can find wild honey okay so there is so much there is so much which we don't realize okay and it is important that we conserve biodiversity because tomorrow this wild honey may have medicinal values okay this gecko what you are looking on the right hand side may be performing a critical function for ecological balance so option value is worried you do not know its presence right now but yes when its presence is detected you will realize its significance okay now let's move on to social value we all pray to gods all right and every god of ours is connected with one or the other animal whether it's your lakshmi or ganesha or vishnu or any god for that matter with respect to any religion or right with respect to any creed so you know social value is a cultural value that is when you associate the biodiversity with customs with the social life with the spiritual aspects with the religion for instance you know i and you most of us you know we have heard about how lotus is important how bale is important how people is important why all this you have tulsi in front of your house okay of course it has certain other beneficial functions but we always pray to tulsi see look that is the social value of your biodiversity see basically the life of tribes their songs their dances their customs they are all closely woven around the biodiversity you must have actually heard about sacred groves this uh, photograph what you see is a sacred grove these tribes pray to the tree okay and invariably the tree is protected they consider the tree as the god how true and how genuine okay now let's move on to understand the direct aspects that is your productive value now when i say productive value these are something which has a commercially viable value where the product can be marketed it can be sold for profitable ventures you know for instance your silk okay the silk which is coming from silkworm or uh, let's say wool which is coming from a sheep 
okay now or you know probably your paper and pulp industry which depends on timber okay so that is the meaning of productive value of biodiversity now of course finally let's move on to something which is very familiar and simple consumptive value again this is a direct value wherein a biodiversity product can be harvested and you actually consume it directly now it can be a food okay probably a terrestrial food sea food it can be a fuel okay it can be drugs and medicines that is medicinal aspects all right now finally something which i prefer to give more importance to ethical values is it that only i and you have a right to live on this earth every organism on this earth has a right to live live and let live sometimes you know your ethical value is also called as existence values okay it incorporate uh, it incorporates the ethical issues that every life must be preserved okay so next time when you speak about man animal conflict when you speak about elephant coming out please go back and understand that was once upon a time a forest which we have cut down elephants did not come to your place you went to their place okay so friends ethical value is not something that can be done at the forest level i and you also can do it all i and you require is to start observing things and stop looking at things start observations okay and then you know i and you will be a true earthling so what are these threats to biodiversity habitat loss hunting deforestation building dams rampant urbanization okay converting a forest belt to agricultural belt yes of course environmental pollution you know i used to often joke with my uh, friends you know whenever i go for a trek inside a forest the moment i step out i feel sick because inside the forest it's so pristine there is no pollution the moment you step out there is plenty of pollution all around okay natural disasters climate change unsustainable mining okay introducing new species and yes forest fire on a natural level and a man made level but you know in simple words my dear friends all of these is connected to one species the homo sapiens just look at the image on your left hand side how sad hunting the mother and the calf okay now what has this resulted in this has resulted in categorizing all your flora and fauna let me tell you it's not just the animals it's not just your reptiles not just your mammals also your plant species it has resulted in categorizing them into five categories critically endangered endangered vulnerable near threatened least concern now those species which are not at any risk let's say your you know your palm squirrel which you see in and around you or your spotted dove or your rock pigeon okay whatever you see around you the crow jungle crow okay they are of least concern okay their population is not going to disappear but then look at your rhinos look at your rare amphibians they're almost going to disappear at various levels and that is where we come to the most important category the least concerned category that is me and you okay your international union for conservation of nature okay popularly called as iucn they are the ones who have come out with this categorization see just for a lighter side i have introduced the last two that is least concern and least concern i am basically talking about vulnerable threatened endangered and extinct okay now there are certain criteria which we follow for example let us say for a particular species the population have declined okay or rather i would say it is going to decrease by more than 80% okay over three generations or let's say last decade or let us say there is a greater probability that this species will disappear or become extinct if it is in the wild or let us say you know we have less than 50 mature individuals or let us say you know the species is restricted to a certain geographical area that is endemism okay so these are the various criteria based on which iucn came out with a red book okay the red data book you can go through this online and you know you will get a list of so many species which are on these list and why is this happening it's because of me and you it's because of our selfishness it's because of our greed okay and let me tell you all these cars you see is because of only one reason population the rate at which we are growing 
okay but there's a limit you know everything is not sustainable see just like you know uh, uh, unfortunately though our population continues to increase it is infinite but the earth is not infinite we have only one solar system we have only one planet we have only one blue planet we have only one earth and it cannot support and harbor so many humans and their extreme greed okay now let me uh, give you a glimpse of those species which are under iucn okay now uh, please remember we are talking about the vulnerable list which means they are on the verge they are literally on the threatened list okay they are vulnerable to disappearance okay and these uh, my dear friends i am talking with respect to india these species are found only in india for example your ratufa indica that is your giant indian squirrel okay if you are a lucky person you will see them see them appreciate them because tomorrow they are not going to be seen okay threatened this is something you know which is closer towards extinction for example your leopard that is your panthera pardus or you know this is something which i'm sure you heard about the salman khan's black buck poaching case my dear friends you know you are looking at black bucks in iit madras okay so they are also threatened okay moving on look at the spiders whether it's your tarantula that is your peacock tarantula or the one which you see here the rameshwaram parachute spider they are also very important you know they control population of uh, the smaller level of insects let us say it could be a moth or your butterfly or your mosquitoes you now how many of us know that your dragon flies you know odonata which you popularly called as helicopter when you were children they eat about 100 mosquitoes per day huh who is better in controlling mosquitoes all out which keeps adding chemicals for us or a natural predator it's always the natural predator okay now yes let's come to the endangered list your royal bengal tiger okay again endemic to india please understand that i am not referring to wild animals in the zoo i am referring to the wildness itself okay these amphibians in fact you know probably uh, in a, a video you're going to look at this bubble nest frog okay how threatened they are okay or your tiger toad what you see them see please understand these frogs also play a very important role probably you know when it is raining nowadays and if you go out in the night you might see things hopping across something which you crush under your wheels okay when you crush these frogs okay it's the snakes who do not have food okay remember snakes control frogs frogs control other things okay now uh, let's move on this is something which is on a very uh, not a critically endangered endangered list whether it's a gharial which you see here okay on your left hand side or whether it's a leatherback turtle see they all are important not just for seeing they also have some critical functions to maintain ecological balance you know how would you feel if i say that tiger is important to protect your kaveri river something like that okay so not just your mammals birds also play a vital role in fact you know if you remove your birds you know uh, these who are supposed to be one of the greatest pollinators what will happen to your green space uh, looking at great indian bustard okay recently it was in news one of the great indian bustards which actually in very less in number okay you know one of them got electrocuted it's sad okay look at your himalayan wolf one endangered critically endangered indian mammal how fortunate will you be to see them in wild very less okay now hence it's important that i and you conserve the biodiversity but you know when it comes to conserving biodiversity there is a ironic sarcastic statement okay how do we conserve why do we conserve in fact you know when we talk about conservation we basically look at uh, two uh, level of species one is your keystone species okay that is those species which are very important for your food chain for your food web for example your tiger or for example any of your apex predators okay now if you remove them or let us say your vulture in fact okay now if you remove these apex predators your entire food chain will collapse okay so keystone species are one of the most important species that needs to be conserved the second one of course is your your charismatic species you know your flagship species now this is where the irony comes the irony comes because you know uh, me and you we humans we actually find it more appealing 
the idea of conserving one species in particular than others for example you know we would rather conserve a tiger than persuade people to conserve a grasshopper that is how unfortunate while both grasshopper and a tiger are equally important but having said all this okay how why do we need to conserve them very simple to preserve the genetic diversity to maintain the well being of ecosystem functions to ensure that your ecological processes are pristine to conserve your natural resources friends you can actually do conservation in two manners one is in situ within the habitat within the wildlife area and the other one is outside the wildlife zone that is outside your habitat which is also called as ex situ for instance let's say i'm talking about in situ so forest areas protected forest reserve forest national parks your wildlife sanctuaries okay all these are part of your in situ conservation wherein you actually give the feeling to the animals that they are in their you know habitat see you are not just conserving a species when it comes to in situ you are also conserving the process please remember it's always about relationship the relationship between your biotic and your abiotic species it's all always about the natural processes the interactions in in situ conservation not only can you conserve the species but you can always conserve the processes and interactions okay but when it comes to your ex situ that is outside natural habitat okay here it is done in captivity let us say you know your zoo or your botanical garden or your gene bank or your seed banks so these are basically bio repositories okay these are basically bio repositories yes this method is uh, kind of costly and you need to have a constant monitoring so friends you know i'll just give you some photographs to make you understand see what you're looking at here is a botanical garden okay now what you're looking at now is a zoo okay now what you're looking at on the left hand side is a forest and now what you're looking at here is a bio repository which can be on a seed bank scale or a gene bank scale so my dear friends to summarize what did i and you learn today we understood about biodiversity we understood why we need to protect it okay what are the various levels and types okay how can we go about conserving it okay what are the biodiversity hot spots and what are those threats to biodiversity that we need to eradicate so friends you know if you look at the screen you are looking at species diversity if you are looking at the screen you are probably looking at ecosystem diversity i'll take one more minute of yours and show you a small video to end this presentation so have a glimpse of this video terrestrial biodiversity hotspots have at least 1500 endemic plant species and have lost at least 70% of their native habitat the indo burma region which encompasses more than 2 million square kilometers of tropical asia is considered a biodiversity hotspot this area contains over 7000 plant species that are found nowhere else nowhere else so which means if you destroy this habitat if you destroy this ecosystem you won't see them again and please remember you know when it comes to your food chain and food web if you remove any one trophic level if you remove one particular species all the other species will be impacted the indo burma region also contains many unique bird fish and mammal species countless species of insects arachnids and fungi are also found here in addition more than 800 reptile and amphibian uh, species also live in indo burma about 40% of those are found nowhere else including the reticulated python you look at the python and you get scared okay but do you know how much of critically important functions it serves the bubble nest frog this is what i had showed you in the previous image the shillong bubble nest frog remember when it comes to india we are sharing border with you know burma also and the golden gecko a long history of forest burning and clearing for agricultural use has destroyed 95% of the original habitat in indo burma this habitat loss has left large numbers of endemic species threatened with extinction because they often contain exceptional concentration of endemic species biodiversity hotspots like indo burma are important areas to conserve and if you do not conserve this what is that you lose you lose all the economic services 
ecological services that is you lose values social value productive value consumptive value aesthetic value option value ecosystem service value see there is so much to lose that we need to understand that we need to start gaining them preserving them so friends uh, i'm done with the presentation okay and uh, these are the references that i've gone through to build this database and document you may kindly go through this and you're also welcome to go through any other study material okay so in the subsequent class you know we shall be basically uh, moving into the advances of energy systems all right now we are done with this today's presentation now the forum is open for any question and answers you know any queries you have we shall open this post for discussion so thank you friends this is rajesh gopinath signing off so please raise your queries thank you